What's going on guys? This is Ryan with RK Outpost and Birds of Prey. I keep telling people that I want this movie to be good, that I want this movie to be successful um, and that I'm going to go and give you an honest opinion. I already have my tickets for opening night. But the way this film is being marketed is a problem, I think, because I I'm worried that people aren't going to go see it. And when you have the actors coming out and saying what they are, specifically Ewan McGregor, but also things that were said by the producer and by Margot Robbie, you know, months and months ago, it's concerning and I don't think it's the best way to get people to go to your movie. So I want to go over what Ewan McGregor said a few nights ago on Jimmy Fallon. We will play the clip, but let's uh, read the lead up in this article here. Birds of Prey, Ewan McGregor is proud to be in a female driven superhero movie. Ewan McGregor shares how proud he is to be part of it, calling it a powerful film with an important message. And during a recent late night appearance promoting Birds of Prey and the fantabulous emancipation of one Harley Quinn, Ewan McGregor discusses how proud he is to be part of this female-made and female-driven superhero movie. The vast majority of movies made today, not just superhero movies, are still primarily made with men as their stars, directors, writers, and producers. But the industry is slowly becoming more equal in gender representation, both in front and behind mm, the camera. Um, and this was written by Sarah Moran. I'm going to assume that's pronounced Moran. Uh, go with that. In the case of superhero movies, Wonder Woman and Captain Marvel are recent examples of female-led films. Yeah, and it's interesting that how Ewan McGregor fa phrases it when he's part of a franchise uh, with DC that had just that with Wonder Woman. And they took, named some other people who, other women who worked on some of these things. Still, Birds of Prey is the first from a major studio that doesn't just star women. It's also directed, written, and largely produced by women. Uh, and, and of course, you know, you know, they, they don't mention, you know, they mentioned Wonder Woman briefly, but the fact that, you know, Gal Gadot, Patty Jenkins, Deborah Snyder produced it. So, you know, that gets ignored. I, I don't quite remember who wrote it. I know that Zach was integral in the storyboard. I don't know who the specific writer was who got the writing credits. But, you know, forget about that. We're focused on Birds of Prey. While promoting Birds of Prey during an appearance on Jimmy Fallon, Ewan McGregor shared how he is excited to be part of this female-driven movie and for his role as the film's villain and chief misogynist. So I will let him go ahead and tell you for himself, because I do think that is best. There's Ewan McGregor. He actually talked a little bit about the Obi-Wan Kenobi series, but this, we're talking about uh, Birds of Prey. So here we go. Birds of Prey. Uh, Brilliant. It's such a great, it's about time that we've got this female-made, female-driven superhero movie. Yeah. yeah. It's, really, it's, it's a really... And the three women go crazy. Powerful, but it was really it was it was uh, it was just exciting to be part of, and it, and a film that covers some of the misogynist nonsense that you ladies have to deal with on a daily basis. And I, I was sort of honoured to be the chief misogynist in the movie. So I'm not. Well, you got to have a villain. Every I'm not a very nice, <laughs> a very nice character in it. But I was proud to be part of it and to get that, you know, to start getting that sort of message further out there is important. Yeah, and it's going to get out because everyone's dying to see this one. Yeah, yeah. And so, so that's what he said, um, that he's proud to be part of it because it, it really tackles misogyny. And listen, this is not the first time that Ewan McGregor said something like this. Months ago, we talked about his statements about this film will tackle misogyny. And I, don't, I just don't know if that's the best way to market your film. You want to get the most people possible interested in seeing this. And you can do that several ways. One would be to make the Birds of Prey look straight up like they were out from a comic book. But they're not doing that. The Birds of Prey look nothing like the Birds of Prey. Another thing would get people invested with, the, with an awesome story or uh, uh, maybe a different message. But when you're telling us that exactly what Ewan McGregor said, that this film is going to tackle misogyny and talk about misogyny, really get it out there that you ladies, you're just oppressed. You guys have to deal with this on a daily basis. You know, that kind of thing. Uh, I'm not interested in that. Listen, I'm going to see it because I'm a diehard DC fan. That's why I'm going to see this movie. And I'll give it a chance and I'll give it a review. Uh, but at this point, it's hard to be excited for it based on the story. Uh, and also, it's hard to be excited for it based on the combat that we have seen. You know, we all anticipated this being, even if it wasn't going to be a great, uh, even if it wasn't going to be a great movie in regards to story at least it was going to be awesome combat sequences because the people doing john wick are involved in this well 
you know, they might have to be a little worried about that too. And we will get that, we will get to that in a couple minutes here at the end because I have some insider information. But uh, we will get to that. They love talk a little bit about Black Mask here. Uh, it's perfect that their villains are misogynistic jerks who likely underestimate the damage this girl can do. Um, Birds of Prey is not only putting its women characters in the spotlight, it's allowing women to tell the story. It's no secret how heavily involved Margot Robbie has been behind the scenes, serving as one of the film's producers in addition to the star. She's been fundamental in shaping this next chapter of Harley's story in the DCEU and helping to bring lesser known characters to the big screen. Having a woman director working from a woman pen script is equally as important, allowing the film a viewpoint that's still rarely seen in a big budget blockbuster. The problem is what's going to happen if this big budget blockbuster um, doesn't get anybody to go to it because of the way they're marketing it. I, I don't understand why DC is doing this. Um, I, I really think they need to be worried. But some, some, people that I've, some people that I've read, the early reactions to it, uh, a lot of them have been positive. Um, but I just don't know if there, there's interest right now in there for this film because of the way it's being put out there to the public. So we'll see. Maybe this good word of mouth will really help like a ton um, if if when reviews actually start to come out, if we continue to get those, uh, which should be within the next day or two here, the official review embargo will lift and we'll get to see exactly what the reviews are, not just a general, you know, 140 characters reaction. But, you know, the fact that Margot Robbie was so involved in this, um, you know, goes back to things that happened several months ago, back in June. Margot Robbie promises less male gazy look for Harley Quinn. And they talk a little bit about the first looks of the Birds of Prey costumes. In a recent story with Vogue, the costume designer Aaron uh, Banach said, That's what happens when you have a female producer, director, and writer. And Robbie agreed, saying, Yeah, it's definitely less male gazy. And again, if that's going to be your goal going forward with this film, that's fine, but I think you're going to lose some of your audience when you intentionally go to make these characters. Uh, you know, look the way that so many of them look in the trailers. I don't even think I need to go too much further. You've all seen the pictures. You've all seen the costumes that don't make sense. You've all seen these characters that don't look like the characters they're supposed to look like. What Harley Quinn is wearing in this, vice what it was in Suicide Squad. Sex sells in Hollywood. This isn't some secret. It's just the truth. But uh, that I think those are reasons to be concerned. And another reason to be concerned is definitely, like I was talking about earlier, this whole combat thing. And uh, I, we watched this video the other day. I want to watch it again real quick um, and then talk about an issue that I have heard behind the scenes with the choreography. So just go ahead and watch this. Think about it. If this is the choreography you expected from a John Wick type of movie. Um, again, just watch uh, if this is the same thing you would expect, the same dynamic, the same uh, reality uh, that you have in some of the John Wick fights. A lot of clear pulled punches, a lot of clear missed punches. She also ducks twice, which I find strange. Um, that's probably an editing issue, not so much a choreography issue. Uh, but you can see here, she's told to duck and she ducks, and then they shoot back to Harley, and then she throws it, and you see her ducking again. Duck, and another duck. Small things, um, and it's a small clip. Small things, small clip, uh, I can understand that, but I, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about what I've heard behind the scenes uh, with this movie specifically and why I think that uh, it all goes into why people should be a little worried. And I do have someone who works uh, very closely with some of the people involved. I don't know why my computer just did that, whoops. But anyway, I, I do have some people that work very close to the people involved in uh, the props and dealing with some of the product placement, things like that. And they've told me something from behind the scenes and what the people working on Birds of Prey are really thinking about and the struggles uh, what I heard was this, according to some of the other prop and crew folks, they're all but expecting Birds of Prey to flop, um, that a lot of them thought they should have delayed the movie and fixed it. And there's some profanity associated with it. Um, 
They also say, definitely don't blame the choreography and direction. You're on the right track with expecting more, but they only had so much to work with. Being a long take action film crew, they don't know how to shaky cam and quick cut, so they're limited by the actresses. And I kind of probed for more details about what you meant by limited by the actresses. Anyway, the girls just weren't interested in putting in the work in fights from what everyone is saying behind the scenes. So there's no way that they were going to sell it. The actresses just effed off. That's the side of this whole women in power thing now behind the scenes. They can just show up out of shape and have zero understanding of the physical aspect of their role. And that's not me calling, I don't think that's this person calling them out of shape or, or like uh, fat or anything like that. No one's fat shaming them. However, but there's a difference, and I'm sure you can talk to a lot of actors and actresses in Hollywood, there's a difference in like your normal in shape and what you need to do to be able to, uh, the physical toll that filming will take on your body. If you've ever listened to Henry Cavill talk about it, he's probably a great person who has talked about it a lot. Um, and then uh, this, my source also said that Scarlett, Gal, and Michelle Rodriguez are a rarity. Um, they are people that really want to shoot and to fight uh, in the things that they do. So that is just what I heard. Um, again, it's someone who's given me some uh, some information in the past that's panned out really well, and I believe that at, that what he's hearing is true. Whether that actually is true behind the scenes, I don't know. It's just a rumor, uh, but you can kind of judge for yourself. But when you see when we see some of the combat that's coming out for clips, and we realize that it's not exactly maybe up to the John Wick part that a lot of us were looking at, I think that might might explain a little bit. But all in all. Uh, I'm going to be seeing this movie in three days. Um, I'll be able to make a final judgment on it then. And I will tell everybody what I think. And I've had some criticism there. If, you don't, if you're not liking it, then just don't see it. Is that really what you want me to do? If I don't like the marketing, don't support DC at all? Um, because that's how you lose. That's how people don't show up to your movie when you tell people that. And uh, I'm going to give it a chance. Like I said, I'm a DC fan. I don't like the way this is being marketed right now, and I'm extremely worried, but I will give it a chance. DC has not gone woke in some kind of way that is it's like unforgivable for me to go see their movies. Uh, if it happens, I'll let you know. And if it does happen and get to the point where I can't watch the movies anymore, that's going to be a really freaking sad day. Um, but we're not there yet. This is just one movie, and it's just the, the lead up. It's just the marketing to it. Maybe we'll get to it and this will be a completely different movie. They've kind of subverted all of our expectations. Uh, it was, maybe I'll just talk. And it really doesn't have anything to do with misogyny or uh, the whole male gazy aspect. They weren't really too focused on that. They were just focused on giving us a great story. I hope that's the case and I will let you guys know. But I want to know from you if you think the marketing for this film is going to be a detriment. Do you think that it's going to basically basically tank this movie. I don't want to say it, but I feel like we might be headed there. Unfortunately, I really hope we're not, but time will tell. And like I said, I'm excited to um, judge it for myself and let everybody know. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Make sure you smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, share this video out there, ring the bell for notifications, and I'll talk to you guys later. Thanks for watching everyone. And a huge shout out to my patrons. I appreciate you guys so much. Want to follow me on Twitter or Instagram? Check out the description below. You'll find links to my P.O. Box and my Patreon as well. And I'll talk to you guys later.